Preparing sheep for breeding in season. That's basically what my whole week was and the vlog coming up is showing you the process of prepping my ewes and my rams. It's gonna outline some of the goals I have for this breeding season. It's also gonna show you some of the practical hands-on stuff I did to prep my two flocks. It's gonna be sharing some nutritional details, some stats from last lambing season, and some hopes for the lambing season to come. Stay tuned, guys. Lots of information in the video upcoming. I'm running two separate groups, sorting between my commercial flock and my registered flock. So I'm running two rams. One ram is just my commercial stock, which just means he's unregistered, purebred dorper. And then the other one is registered. And registered just means there's a paper trail from here to South Africa, tracking his dorper lineage way back to the homeland. And those groups will be running separately until all of the girls are bred. I'm gonna be running a breeding harness on both of my rams, which will mark the ewes once they have bred them. Once that's all happened, they'll come together in one big happy group for the remains of winter. And I will be sorting the rams out probably around lambing time. I am running a pasture-based, grass-based system and all my sheep run pretty much on grass and grass only for the entirety of the year. And getting them ready for breeding, there are a few tweaks in pasture management that I am making to increase my lambing percentages. I was at 1.3 lambing last year, which national average is 1.1, so I guess I'm doing okay as far as the national average. However, my goal is to hit at least 1.5 this year. And I was told that management plays as much a role in the fertility of a flock as genetics. But also the lambing percentage should naturally go up this season because last lambing, half of my ewes were ewe lambs. And ewe lambs characteristically just drop one. So number one is for the four weeks preceding the ram entrance and for the four weeks after the ram goes in, I increased paddock sizing by about 200%. I let the ladies be entirely selective and I did not force them to eat anything they did not want to eat. They skimmed a very, very large area for their favorite foods and we moved on. This is kind of my way of flushing them on pasture, making sure that they are able to eat basically the best of the best. Whatever they leave behind, I have steers that I will come through, clean up the pasture with so there's no waste. Number two is making sure all of their nutritional deficiencies or physical deficiencies are addressed. One of my ladies out there had a bit of a hoof issue. So I took her up, I mended her hoof, I watched her and made sure she totally healed and she's good. And this year because of the selenium issue I had over summer, I made sure to double up on my minerals. Number one was a general purpose mineral I buy just from my local tractor supply. And number two was a relatively expensive selenium iodine premix from Premier One. And I left that out and will leave it out for pretty much forever. The selenium deficiency, it's a soil thing as well as a climate thing. So probably just gonna be part of my regular routine forever. So anything at all that could induce stress, I got it done way in advance, meaning about two weeks before the ram goes in, I did my fall dewormer. Now our handling system is down to where it's really not a stressful situation for most of my ewes, but I do still have a couple of ewes that just run circles and do get stressed out by that dewormer process. So I got that out of the way two weeks before the ram went in. And what this also means is that parasite loads will be way, way down. So that strategic timing of the dewormer will contribute to a much lower stress time period, which is my hope that it will contribute to more twins, maybe some triplets. I don't know, guys, but I kind of want a couple sets of triplets in 2022. Maybe I'm asking for trouble because I hear triplets are kind of a nightmare. Aside from that, I'm continuing my larger paddock sizing. I'm moving just once a week. It's been really dry here, and moving daily for the parasites has not been a needful thing. And I'm just gonna leave them in paddocks for one week at a time, probably until the growing season kicks back up again, or until we get some more rain to jumpstart new growth. Now in essence of full disclosure, I do occasionally throw out a 18% protein block. If the forage is bad or overmature or somebody's looking skinny, I'll put out a block of protein to kind of get a little bit more out of my pasture. And that protein block does have some grain byproducts in it. That is the only feed supplement besides the minerals that my flock has right now, besides just grass and grass only. 
and you have to have one every year apparently because my ramps broke out in the middle of September so I'm gonna be looking for some mid-February Valentine's lambs this year I got these jeans, they were a cowboy cat. So I figured, why not? Get my self rounded. Oh! You can not know I like to think. Maybe bubble. Okay, just a second. You could knock them up in this corner.